Hello everybody, Jedi Warlock here, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today, I'm returning to the world of Middle-earth to take a look at another of my favorite regions in Lord of the Rings Online. Located to the east of Breeland, the abandoned Lone Lands entice players to venture beyond the farms and fields of men and explore the vast ruins of the ancient kingdom of Arnor. Servants of the enemy inhabit the Grey Hills and crumbling monuments, but outposts of the Free Peoples can also be found here, eking out a harsh existence in the remnants of the North Kingdom. It falls to you to aid the men, dwarves, and more unexpected allies of the region to quell the threat of Angmar while learning more about your character and the world. I'll be examining the Lone Lands from the story, landscape, and content perspectives to give you all a comprehensive review of this zone that still holds up pretty darn well after 15 years of Lotro. So, with all that being said, let's get right into it and explore the world of Middle-earth. Much like Breland and the North Downs, the Lone Lands are a region long past their prime. This was once the heart of the North Kingdom of Arnor, established by the descendants of Numenor in the days of old. But now, the deteriorating ruins are all that remain of Arnor's legacy. The most notable of these, the Watchtower of Amun Sul, or Weathertop, holds a gusty vigil atop the largest slope, looking down on the dreary landscape. This landmark was the meeting point of the three smaller kingdoms created after the fall of Arnor, Cardalon, Rudaur, and Arthedain. While two of the smaller countries fell due to internal conflict and Angmar's influence, the hill men of Rudaur maintain a presence in the northeast and have come under the sway of Sauron's servants. In addition to dark men, orcs and goblins of the White Hand can be found encamped on the hills and plains, preparing for an all-out war against the free peoples of Middle-earth. Trolls trudge through the shaded swamps, falling under the influence of dark powers, and undead roam several of the ruins, unbeholden to the will of the living. With only a handful of free holdouts surviving in these lone lands, the future for the region looks bleak. However, all is not lost. The rangers of the north, though few in number, have sent Candath, one of their own, to help quell the influence of evil. Players helping the nearby free peoples on the border of Breland will encounter this lone ranger near Weathertop and help take down nearby orcs threatening the lands of men. Traveling across the countryside, heroes will encounter camps of treasure hunters, dwarves, and even the mysterious Jorthkin, a type of earth giant who have largely resisted the enemy's control. Players will eventually journey to the dilapidated fortress of Ostgurth, where an unexpected friend welcomes the player. Radagast the Brown, one of the five wizards, has come to the Lone Lands as well, and works to defeat the gaunt lord Ivar the Bloodhand, who dwells within the secluded Garth Agarwen. Striking out from this place of safety, you as the player fight alongside Radagast and the defenders of Ostgurth to enter and secure an outpost in the Red Swamp, the doormat of Ivar's domain, before bracing for an attack on the stronghold itself. Before we dive into exactly how the quests progress in this region, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the major areas you'll be exploring throughout your Lone Lands adventure. If you venture into the Lone Lands on the Great East Road, the wide country of Ananlos opens up and greets your player. The Forsaken Inn, a welcoming, if run-down, quest hub, offers players their first round of quests, which sends them into the nearby hills and ruins to deal with the threats here. As one of only two major quest hubs in the region, this is often where newcomers to the zone group up and begin their journeys, or venture down into the basement to explore the long-forgotten tunnels of the Forsaken Inn itself. For those who entered the Lone Lands by a different road, 
the Weather Hills are home to both Candaith's Ranger Camp, as well as many Orc and Goblin bases, all tucked under the shadow of Weathertop itself. After Hobbiton and the Prancing Pony, this is one of the main landmarks players can visit in-game, and its scale and height are not underrepresented. Traveling to the top for the first time is a lengthy trip, but it offers a magnificent view of the region. Opposite Weathertop, on the southern slopes of the region, the sprawling ruin of Minas Ariel, overrun by the forces of Isengard, is in need of liberation. A band of treasure hunters has taken up camp nearby, providing players with a jumping-off point to enter the ruins and uncover their secrets. As an added note, this area has multiple levels connected by bridges and staircases, giving players an added environmental challenge that is often left out of typical 2D-centric MMOs. The center valley of the Lone Lands, Nain Enid, is home to multiple grandiose ruins, all of which are overrun by various factions of the enemy, save one. Ostgurath, bastion of the Eglane humans, serves as the de facto capital of the region. Radagast's tower can be found here also, and is a major location within this part of the epic storyline. Haragmar is found just to the east of Ostgurath, a swampy pit filled with corruption from the Red Swamp. The menacing Red Pass connects this area into the Red Swamp to the north. It is bordered to the south by Talith Gaon, the easternmost section of the Lone Lands, which is home to the Earth Giants and another few camps of the Eglane. Adventurers are eventually sent south to the secluded valley of Harlog, which is one of my personal favorite areas in the entire region. Half of this area is covered in forest, allowing clans of monstrous trolls to roam freely. I'm not sure what this web-covered entryway is exactly. Maybe a forgotten or future area? Anyway, on the other side of the valley lies a cursed ruin sinking into the marsh, a slimy hideaway for whites and their overseers. I know it might be easy to overlook this area, especially if you're bouncing between the Lone Lands and the North Downs, but trust me, it's a neat little enclave that's worth checking out. The northernmost valleys of the Lone Lands envelop Agamar, the Red Swamp, a massive citadel of Rudaur that has since fallen. Foliage, crimson pools, and the dead infest the broken pillars and walls, and the overgrown nature of the area makes navigation maze-like. It is here where the Eglane first press toward Gartha Garwen, Ivar's seat of power. This is the final area of the Lone Lands, meant for adventurers above level 30, and offers three instances in the form of the three wings of Gartha Garwen, which allow players to take on the final remaining threat to the zone and experience the finale to the Lone Lands story. The Lone Lands are a free content area within Lotro, meaning you won't have to turn in any of your hard-earned Lotro points to unlock the quests here. This region is designed for players levels 22 to 35, and to the best of my knowledge, the free content also includes all three wings of Gartha Garwin and the Inn of the Forsaken bonus instance. Quite a lot to do in a region that, at first glance, might just look like a bunch of abandoned hills. Overall, the quests in this region are expertly planned and follow a logical path, both location and story-wise. Moving across the landscape, completing groups of quests, and learning more about the zone as you approach the source of Angmar's strength all come together to give players a complete narrative experience that stands well on its own but also functions as a perfect chapter within the broader Shadows of Angmar storyline. This zone is really where the hand-holding disappears, and Lotro's impeccable game progression allows the player to group up or play solo as they travel across the environment from one objective to the next. The wide open spaces with few rest stops in between force players to adapt to the environment 
manage their inventories as they come across loot, and manage their milestone cooldowns efficiently to prevent unnecessary travel. One thing I did want to mention is the split in content that occurs near the end of the Lone Lands questline. After entering Agamaur and reaching level 30, the Eaglane give you the opportunity to venture to the North Downs and continue the epic storyline there. I've made a separate video analyzing the North Downs, which you can check out here, but for those really jamming with the Lone Lands story and maybe already have a group put together, I would highly encourage players to continue with the remaining quests here in the Red Swamp and clearing out Garth Agarwen. It's a satisfying end to the chapters of the story told thus far, wrapping up part of the Shadows of Angmar questline that began in Breland, Arid Luin, and the Shire. To wrap things up, I'd like to reiterate that the Lone Lands aren't just a great standalone region, but they're also an excellent part of Lotro's wider Middle-earth. A bridge between what your character has already experienced and all the adventures that are yet to come. Even with Before the Shadows new alternative regions for this level range, I think we can all agree the Lone Lands have a special place in the hearts of many Lotro players and deserve to be regarded as one of the best. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's region breakdown, make sure to like the video, comment down below with your thoughts, subscribe if you're new to join the Jedi Order, and until next time, peace.